Hey guys, how are you? Uh, I know I've been doing a lot of videos. I'm getting a little more brave to talk on video. But I, I just wanted to say my reasoning behind a lot of my posts, especially about Trump and his supporters and whatnot. Um, it, it's not okay with a lot of what these Trump supporters have been saying on social media and claiming to be Christian because... You're making Christians a bad name by saying Trump 2020, by supporting a murderer like Carl, like Kyle Rittenhouse, right? Um, Kyle Rittenhouse was someone who went to Kenosha, Georgia, across state lines to look for trouble, right? Um, and let's just be honest. If Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, if he, if he wasn't white, if he was black, uh, you know the story and the narrative would be a lot different. Right, a lot of Christian organizations on GoFundMe, they raised a lot of money for this guy to bail him out, and that really shocks me and surprises me because you know Christian and Christianity is all about love, right? And they say we don't see color, we love all people, right? If you love all people as Christians, then you have no problem saying Black Lives Matter. But Christians do. Not all Christians, but Christians do. Um, you say that Jesus loves everybody, but a lot of Christians, you know, they condemn trans uh, transphobic people, trans people, and they condemn homophobic, like hom hom homosexuality, right? Um, and this really got me thinking about the LGBT community, the trans community, and the black community because uh, you can't say all lives matter when your actions display that it doesn't. You talk trash to black communities. You talk trash to homo uh, homosexuality and you talk trash to the LGBT community. You talk trash to the trans community and you... A lot of people like Trump supporters mention black on black crime. And you guys mention about how the Proud Boys isn't a racist group. It is. It's a right wing racist group that's on the FBI watch list. And then you guys proceed to say fake news. I can't fathom that. It, 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 it's, it really surprises me, right? And then you use, well, the founder of the Proud Boys, he was black or he was Hispanic. And I'm thinking, are, are you serious right now, right? And um, over the summer, I've lost a lot of Facebook friends. I mean, Facebook allows 5,000 friends. And I was at 5,000 friends, and I, I really hit the max. And then um, the whole summer, right, since the George Floyd murder from these uh, police officers, who aren't even police officers, because police officers aren't... Uh, aren't killers they shouldn't be right but the majority of what i've seen with with a lot of police profiling racial profiling against black people mainly right and uh you know the experiences of the black community that has never been heard and then it's heard now only because we saw a man die on live television eight minutes and 46 seconds and then all the other victims before George Floyd, uh, you know, came out, right? About things that the police have done, the corrupt police. And um, Christians are silent on this matter. Uh, not all communities, Christian communities have said and denounced police brutality, nor have they ever said Black Lives Matter. Uh, you know, some Christian communities have and some haven't. They stayed silent. And what's even a big insult to the black community is Christians raise money. I don't know which particular Christian group raise money to bail out Kyle Rittenhouse, which is is it 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 makes me at a loss for words and frustrated. And um, it saddens me, right? And then I, I I've seen a lot of realtors as well that say, um, you know. 
black on black crime or the virus came from China. I mean, 2020 was like a year of、uh, racial war, racial gaslighting, and、uh, a pandemic rolled into one. It's like this year, it's like、uh, spin the wheel to pick on a particular group. You know, first it was Asians and the Asian community、um, telling them they're the virus, go back to Wuhan, go back to China. And like these racist people can't even tell the difference between a Chinese person and a Korean person. So, you know, don't, don't expect to not, not try to speak your own language because no one's going to know the difference between a Chinese and Korean. These racist people, they just call every Asian they see the Kung flu or go back to your country. And that awakened me of all the experiences I had growing up, you know, hearing. You know, Kung Flu, Ching Chong, go back to your country.、Uh, I've been called a chink. I've been called a gook. You know, I've been made fun of my eyes. You know, they say they had dental floss eyes, and I ignored it, right?、Uh, and all those experiences I have ignored, walked away.、Um, but 2020 was a lot more different because instead of walking away, they will come after you, right? You got to either have your phone camera ready to take a picture or. You, you got to get, get straight and, and tell them to back the F up, right? And with all that's going on, right? And the realtors and friends and colleagues that I thought were colleagues that I've lost on social media, and it's, 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 a well, it's a well deserved written off for these people because I don't need those people in my life, you know, because they can't seem to understand that it's racist. To be anti Asian, you can't call the coronavirus the Kung Flu virus you, or the Chinese virus. You know, you can't weaponize that word to attack the Asian community, right? While trying to serve the Asian community by taking their money, especially realtors out there. You realtors out there, you know, you say the most horrible things and make jokes about Asian folks, but when it comes to trying to sell their house in Irvine, right? Or, or other parts of California. Then all of a sudden, you, you, you want to be an Asian ally, right? And most of you realtors that have written a lot of bad stuff on my wall and had arguments with me through Facebook War,、um, you deleted your comments or you blocked me, which I thought that was very cowardly of you, right? And it's interesting how you leave that there. You don't leave that there on my message, right? You actually delete it. And then you tell, proceed to say, I must not understand English well, right? So, you know, word of advice you never tell any Asian folk out there that maybe they don't understand English and to learn English, right? That's not only insulting, but you're trying to gaslight Asian communities, right?、Um, you're poking at us. And the difference now in 2020 is I'm not going to take it. And I'm going to stand up for a lot of my Asian brothers and sisters out there. And I'm going to stand up for a lot of my Blasian. Sisters and brothers out there, too, because、um, that's a community that I, I was not aware of, to be honest, right? The Blasian community. I didn't learn about that.、Um, and I'm, I'm so interested in learning about a lot of the Blasian communities out there around the United States, around the world. I'm also interested in learning about the adoptees, you know, the Korean adoptees, the international adoptees. And I met a lot of those. Uh, folks and those communities on my Facebook. And I'm, I'm glad I connected with all of you because, you know,、um, it's good to connect with better people and good people like that because you educate me and we have discussions and we put, you know, we banter back and forth and I appreciate that.、Um, I may not know you personally one by one, but it's good to meet you guys and connect. Right? Because I'd rather connect with people who are not racist and who don't gaslight other communities because you know, they try to educate what is and was, is not racist. I, I'm, I'm willing to learn from you guys because you guys don't do that.、Um, I've lost a lot of friends, really. I mean, when I say Facebook has 5,000 friends, I literally lost like anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 friends just this past summer. But at the same time, I gained as many much of those friends as well.、Um, it's very interesting. And some of the things that I post,、um, you know, my Facebook friends went from 5,000 to 4,998 or things like that because I've triggered somebody. And that's fine, you know.、Um, 
one thing about me, as I keep saying, is I'm really open. And I'll admit my mistakes if I'm wrong. And not only will I be an ally to any community that wants me to be their ally, right? But I will not be a Trump supporter, ever. I don't support racist. I don't support misogynistic behavior. And I don't support um, Proud Boys who are racist and misogynistic, right? Um, and it, it really got me to be open and brave with myself and who I am as an Asian American person in this country. And at the same time, my identity, right? Um, you know, who am I as, as an identity, right? And, um, I don't fit in the mainstream Americans in the United States society because of the way I look, right? I'm Asian. And then I don't fit in my own Asian community because I don't speak the language of Korean that well. And I don't look Korean sometimes to some people. Um, as you can see, I'm a little overweight. My face is kind of chunky and chubby. But um, it took me a long time to be comfortable with my own body and the way I look, right? And then um, for people that have been wondering about my post and my makeup, um, you know, I I'm being brave on that because, you know, I've, I've always wanted to wear makeup and love makeup, but I, I have not been very brave in my younger years. I'm 42 years old and this pandemic has really taught me that you live life once, so I thought I'd go for it and post things, you know, that I, I, I don't mind posting. I used to keep a lot of my photos private, my Halloween pictures and things like that private because I was just afraid of what people would think. But now I, I just don't care because you live life once. And what this pandemic has taught me is really who are your allies and who is not your ally, who is your friends and who is not your friends. Um, and, you know, someone from a Catholic background, Christian background, what I don't like is a lot of Christians out there claiming to be Christian but have stupid memes on their pro Facebook profile or even signs that say Jesus wouldn't wear a mask. Um, I wouldn't use Jesus during a pandemic about wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. And I, I kind of wonder, when did wearing a mask become political, right? It shouldn't be political. It's, it's for health and safety. Wear your mask, right? You're not only just protecting yourself, but you're protecting others. If you love grandma and grandpa, protect them, the elderly, right? But people just don't seem to care. They don't care anymore. They just like, it's my right, it's my right. And I don't want to be a sheep. It's the democratic left that made us wear a mask. And I, I'm thinking about like, well, there's seatbelts. You're wearing a seatbelt when you're driving in your car. I don't see you protesting that. That's so stupid. And then to use Jesus as Jesus wouldn't wear a mask that's really concerning. That that kind of tells me, like, are you really a Christian when you say you're Christian by using Jesus about, you know, him wearing a mask or not wearing a mask? I think Jesus would wear a mask just to say, let's let's be considerate of others. Right. And then there's also a lot of Christians out there that have memes on their profile or 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 things that with signs that says Jesus was a capitalist. He was never a socialist or, or communistic. And, uh, you know, Jesus was about communal living. And that's what communism is, communal living. That's the original theory of communism, where everybody shares resource and live together as community. Hence the word communism. I think a lot Russia and North Korea has distorted that word communism and made it a bad word, and it's not. And if you really want to talk about Jesus, he was a socialist. And the reason why I say he was a socialist is because Jesus helped the poor. You know, gave ask people to give their riches to the poor, right? He didn't build mega churches like Joel Alstein and all those other mega churches that are out there, right? He helped the poor and he gave the money where the people needed the money, right? That's socialism, in my opinion. And not only that, um, Jesus never, never uh, had statues built on for him or built an empire. He was for the people. That's who Jesus was. Jesus was for the people. So when Christians are out there saying Jesus was a capitalist, that really, really concerns me because what Bible are you reading when you're saying Jesus was a capitalist? And what Christian doctrine are you reading and learning from if you're saying about Jesus wouldn't wear a mask and using Jesus as a prop 
for wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, right? I'm in Southern California and Huntington Beach is like full of Karens and Darens out there about mask, not wearing a mask and it's my right and all that other stuff. And it's, it's very concerning here in Southern California for me that Huntington Beach and Orange County is an area where people don't want to wear a mask. I mean, the, the Orange County Board of Governors meeting, the Board of Supervisors meeting during the summer, it, it was like all hell, all hell just broke loose over a mask. And, you know, it, it's October and we're not getting any better in terms of having the COVID-19 in check, right? Um, people are, are waiting for the vaccine. And, um, you know, I know there's a lot of people that say, I don't want to get the vaccine. Um, you know, uh, I want to wait and see. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what's going to happen when the vaccine comes out. Am I going to be the first group of people to actually take the vaccine? You know, I'm probably going to be like one of those folks. And well, let me wait and see what happens to the first group and maybe go in the second or third group to see if there's any side effect. I know that sounds really horrible saying that, but I'm being honest with you. Um, you know, I want a vaccine, but I want to wait and see to see what happens. Right. But at the same time, uh, you know, I want to protect my family to get the vaccine so they're safe because we have a lot of idiots here in Southern California that just doesn't want to wear a mask. They make it a political issue, whether it's the left or the right. And it shouldn't be. Right. And then I mentioned a lot on my Facebook post about um, uh, QAnon. Right. I've been discovering a lot about these QAnon groups that are po posting these false information and narratives all over social media to give misinformation to people. Right. And websites like PragerU, uh, Charlie Cook and Ben Shapiro, those websites. And um, I talk a lot of smack about those websites and I share it like don't follow these douches. And I, I do that because I'm so angry with these websites. Like, how are you shaping young minds to think? Like, here's an example. Uh, systemic and institutional racism is not real. They believe that it's not even real. It never existed. And I'm thinking about, you know, the Fair Housing Act of 1968. Because they wanted to eliminate and give eliminate redlining, which means redlining was where you uh, don't give certain loans into certain communities. And those certain communities happen to be black communities and people of color. And the federal government enacted the 1968 Fair Housing Act to say no more. You're going to give loans to everybody and you're not going to discriminate loans based on race, right? That was 1968. So that was like 52 years ago. It's not that long ago. It was not like hundreds of years ago, right? Um, and these are the same people that, uh, you know, support the confederate flags and confederate statues and christopher columbus and all of that and i'm thinking you know christopher columbus he was a rapist you know he committed genocide of the indigenous people but no one's really talking about that it's not even the, in the history books because i remember when i went through k-12 through education i learned christopher columbus discovered america that's what i was taught right but as i got older and more and more history is coming out about who Christopher Lum Columbus was. He's essentially a rapist and he was equivalent to Hitler, right? And that's sad. And then, you know, we have President Trump that wants to honor and celebrate a rapist like Christopher Columbus, right? Um, you know, and the Catholic Church, they, they did a lot of wrong things historically. They apologize and they admit they were wrong, right? But there's still a lot of Catholic priests out there and Catholic people that are right up there with Trump and that would be racist and say they're not racist, right? Especially those folks that don't realize they're racist by saying, hey, Kendrick, I don't mean to be racist, but, right? And they say racist stuff. That That's what I mean. Like, it, it's just so ingrained, right? That, that fragility, um, you know, and I, I find it very interesting in my journey today in 2020 within, within this year, I've grown so much to be open and brave and speak up because I never really spoke up for the Asian community. I was very silent. I never spoke up for other Asians that were going through a hard time. I, I, my attitude literally was mind my business, right? But 
I think I can't mind my business. Even on social media, when I see when I call out something stupid like, you know, people said something really dumb or racist or just really anti black and anti Asian, I, I have this need to call it out because I, I, I'm angry. I don't I don't need to deal with that. You know, I mean uh, this is 2020 and we still get those stupid Asian jokes. I mean, unless you're my best friend and you're a fellow Asian, yeah. But if you're like a non-Asian and then you're going to try to educate me on what is and what is not anti-Asian behavior or racism against Asian, it makes me feel like I don't need a white savior to tell me what I can and cannot call out, right? Um, and I know that sounds harsh, but... You know, it's the reality. You, if you're not Asian, you can't say what is and is not Asian, anti-Asian behavior, right? Just like I'm not black and I can't tell a black person what is and what is not anti-black behavior, right? Because that's not my experience. I wouldn't know until I'm getting educated on, right? And a lot of the, the Blasian folks out there that tell me their experiences privately or message me and... I felt like, wow, I did not know. I mean, you know, you're stuck between the Asian community and the black community and you you can't fit in either one because neither one community accepts you sometimes, right? And and it's kind of sad. Um, and, and not to bring it back on myself, but this is how I felt growing up in the United States. I don't feel American because I'm not accepted by American people because of the way I look, because I'm Asian. But I can't be accepted in my own Korean community because I'm not the typical Korean, right? In terms of cultural mannerisms and whatnot. I don't fit in. Um, if you grew up in the 90s, you know, we used to have the Korean-American side and then the fobs, right? And then these fobs, the fresh off the boat Koreans, they would call us Itaewon. And Itaewon means like it's a city in, the United, in, in South Korea where it's a military base where there's just a lot of um, white folks, American folks there, basically. And they would call us that as an insult, right? Saying that we're like um, bananas. And banana is, it's a basically a derogatory term where it says you're yellow outside, but you're white inside, right? And, and, and I, I didn't really think that was an insult. It was like, whatever. But... Yeah, it was always a divide between Korean Americans and then the Koreans that are immigrated here. And I don't think that's ever changed. And maybe it has. And maybe I didn't pay attention. So I don't know. I, I think um, I think our own communities have to kind of get together and acknowledge our own self-hatred against each other sometimes, right? Because, you know, Koreans, let me tell you, you know, when they don't think I'm Korean and they and they think I'm some other ethnic group... They talk a lot of smack, you know. Um, they would they would say, "Look at this fat ass," um, you know. He looks like a sumo wrestler, and they don't even know I'm Korean. They just assume that I'm some other ethnic group. And when I speak in Korean, they just kind of like surprised, not even apology, but just a surprise, and they just kind of walk away or just don't say anything, right? And it's very interesting. Like, uh, you know, even, even Korean ajamas, which is like the Korean older ladies, if you go to a Korean restaurant, you know, they don't know I'm Korean, but I go in with um, a lot of my um, black friends and, and Spanish speaking friends. And, you know, um, you know, one of my friends had a daughter and I was holding the daughter and they were like looking at us like we were a couple and we were not. And they just kind of had this weird look like, what is this Asian guy doing with a non-Asian person? And I thought, wow, you know, you, you could feel that little tension in terms of staring down. And when they found out I spoke Korean, their attitude completely changed. So, you know, those type of little aggressions, micro and macro aggressions within our own Asian community, we need to change that. So then that way, maybe we could bond together and, and, and work together as a team for you know, not just our rights, but our power here in the United States. And when I say power, I mean political power. And I'm, I'm also meaning like trying to make meaningful change, like laws, you know, like in Torrance. I, you, the video went viral in Torrance back in June 9th, 2020. Somewhere in Torrance, California, there was this park. I forgot the park's name, but this Filipino lady, she, she was just um, working out. So she, she's a workout Instagram person. 
So she always makes videos of her workouts. And caught on that workout video, you know, was this lady out of nowhere who tells her to go back to China. You're not welcome here and all these nasty stuff. And that video went viral. It hit the uh, website called Next Shark. And it was on the news. And they found out that this lady in Torrance is living in Long Beach. And she has a case against her from 2019. But she attacked an Asian woman. Uh, physically assaulted her at the Lomo Mall. The DA brought the case this year. And they heard the case. And she's, she got like three months, two, three months or something like that. Not even, not even a, a significant a jail time for that action. And that was for a 2019 incident at the Lamo Mall. It was not even for the prosecution for what she spewed out, all that hate, to this Asian woman in the park. And on that same day, she did it again around Torrance community to some father and son who happened to be Asian. And that's what really got me angry during that summer is like, okay, the, the, you know, no one is safe. If you're not, if you're black, if you're Asian, and if you're Spanish speaking, indigenous, a minority or pe a person of color, you are not safe right now in this country in 2020 because people are very brazen. And then I get people that say, well, you know, Trump isn't racist because he, racism was always there. I'm not saying Trump brought racism to this country. Racism to this country was always here from the beginning. You know, the United States of America was founded on racism and on the backs of indigenous folks and people of color who built this country but don't get credit in the history books, right? But they give credit to a rapist like Christopher Columbus. Um, I'm talking about Trump has brought racist folks out of the woodworks, the KKK, the right white supremacist uh, militias out there, the neo-Nazis, the Proud Boys. And if you remember Charlton 2017, that was horrible times because those Proud Boys and, and those white supremacists and neo-Nazis, you know, they, they really um, physically attacked a lot of the protesters, right? They egged on a lot of the protesters and they committed most of the violence and the blame went to the protesters. Um, and that's been the pattern all this time. Um, the pandemic has really taught me about who my friends are, who my allies are, and to be careful. And especially to a lot of the elderly Asian folks out there, I really look out for them and watch them like a hawk because I want to make sure that they're safe. They, they, might be, they may not be my grandma. They may be someone else's grandma, but we don't want to hear on the news about a grandma's hair set on fire, like what happened in New Jersey, New York area on the East Coast back in July, right? Um, there are so many things that happened. Um, Breonna Taylor, you know, um, Elijah McClain, Gardena, during the summer, if you heard about the incident in Gardena, California, a, a Hispanic security guard, 18-year-olds, was shot in the back by police, Right? Uh, there's been lynchings here in Southern California, which I was shocked, right? Because I'm thinking 2020, right? And the the LA Sheriff Department and the um, investigations, they say it, it was a suicide. How do you hang yourself on a tree and call it suicide? That just that's not only scary times, but it's it's like uh, wow, careful, right? Um, there's also community bulletins that say go in groups <laughs> and I truly will not go out by myself. I will go in groups because that's how much I feel unsafe, even though I'm not African American and I'm not Blasian and, um, I have a little more privilege because I'm Asian, right? Because, you know, uh, they won't mess with a lot of Asians in certain areas because they, they know that we have money or something like that, that stereotype, but you know, being black in America, seeing that on the news and, you know, what happened during the Starbucks incident in Philadelphia in 2018, that really got me thinking about my own privilege because, you know, I'd never been asked to get a code for the bathroom or I had to purchase something, right? And believe me, I, I when I was a student, I sat there in Starbucks 
uh, play Dungeons and Dragons all day without getting any purchase items, use the bathroom. No one told me to get the code. And I didn't dress professionally. I, I, I look like a bum most of the time. Um, it, it, it was... I, I never even thought about that. And nor did I ever really have to think that if a police officer pulls me over, right, is my life in danger? Because, you know, I'm going to admit, I was a Karen to the police officer. I said, my taxes pay for your stuff. And I, I yelled at the police, called them names and all that stuff. But I never got tased, put in the back of the police car because I talk a lot of smack to the police officer. And I, I even said, F you. And I called the police officer a pig before. Never got shot down, right? Um, so, you know, that that's a privilege that I have and I, I should acknowledge, right? People have been talking over the summer about privilege and check your privilege. Um, and you know what? Th that term privilege isn't just towards white people. It's towards a lot of Asian folks that have the privilege that don't even know it, right? Like, my privilege is because I'm Asian, I don't have to worry about getting shot by the police officer, or getting pulled over and I could talk a lot of smack. I never knew and thought about that I have to be careful as a black person that keep my hands on the wheel and all that stuff. I never even thought about that. And when I started learning stories about this and hearing from other friends about this, I thought, huh, I just never knew. Right? Um, there's just so much during 2020 that has happened that has kind of awakened me so much to speak up and to be aware and learn. And, um, you know, those of you that don't know me, I, I, I'm also a part-time educator at, at different schools. And I teach in business and real estate. And I, um, you know, don't really talk about culture or racism in my classes as often because th there's no really topic in real estate or business to really talk about that. But I try to find a little few things to talk about it to to kind of, where I can incorporate those topics, right? And I think when it comes to ethics and fair housing laws, I do incorporate that. Um, but one of the things that I, I do know as an educator is that a lot of students are learning from these Ben Shapiro and Charlie Kirk websites and going to PragerU, which is a false narrative, right? Um, and teaching these young minds saying, saying that racism isn't real and I don't see color and that is very dangerous, right? Um, ben Shapiro talks about facts over feelings and claims that, uh, you know, there's only two genders, right? Um, and I think that's wrong. There's, there's more than one gender. Gender is fluid. You know, uh, there's two sexes based on what you have biologically uh, as an equipment, right? that determines you biologically as a male or a female. But in terms of gender, gender is a social construct, right? And if you look throughout history, you know, who wore the makeups and the high heels and, you know, the corsages and all that stuff? It was the men, right? Something changed within that social construct where now it was a woman that's supposed to wear those things, right? Um, the idea of women are supposed to be subservient towards men. That is a social construct, right? That's not even a fact. And I don't like it when Christians use that Bible of uh, women needs to obey and all that other stuff. You know, no, women don't need to obey nothing. And I truly tell men to mind your own business. It's none of your business what a woman does, what a woman wears, right? I don't see any people telling a man, right, your, your shirt is too short, you're showing too much stomach or you're showing too much this. And a lot of these, um, you know, clothing, school, school clothing dress code policies, they're very one sided where they target the female students rather than the male students. Right. Because, you know, the dress is too short, the short is too short. I mean, you're, you're being um, discriminatory and you're, you're focusing on uh, the female students more than you are the male students. And, I believe that's a Title IX violation, right? Because you're not giving equal education and opportunity and equal environment and a safe environment for the young female students out there. But, you know, with Betsy DeVos as a educator, Secretary of Education on the federal level, that really concerns me, right? And Amy Cohen, Cohen Barrett, whatever her judge name is, man, she, 
she really scares me because I feel like the Handmaid's Tale is going to become a reality. So when I post things about that and I, I say fight for Roe versus Wade and all this other stuff, is because I really don't want our society to become Handmaid's Tale. I really don't because our society is going backwards. And when a lot of Trump supporters say MAGA, M-A-G-A, Make America Great Again, what I'm hearing is make America like it was before the Civil Rights Movement and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 where we will be separated and minorities, you stay in your lane and white power. That's, that's what I'm seeing and that's what I'm hearing when people are saying make America great again. Because those that are saying make America made again, majority of that are a lot of the white folks or the Proud Boys or the neo-Nazi groups that are saying that. And that scares me, right? Um, you know, I talk brave, but, you know, if it really came down to a physical fight, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not a fighter. <laughs> I'm not a fighter, but I will stand up, you know, and, and, and do my best, you know, I will get beaten with you. That's fine. But really, I mean, do you really want to make America great again by going back to the 1950s where women's really, women didn't have any rights. It was like women in the kitchen, right? And women could be, you know, just seen as an object, right? That, that's wrong. And, and I, I think a lot of the older generation that happened to be white missed those times, right? Where they could freely call the black person the N-word or where they could freely look at me and call me a, a chink or a gook. Because ever since Trump was president, there are brave racists out there, right? And, the, you know, and I noticed the pattern. Since 2016 presidential election between Hillary Clinton and Trump, and when Trump actually became president and inaugurated in 2017, I've been noticing a lot of these um, racial undertones and anti-Asian and anti-blackness from people. Um, it didn't really affect me to the point where I'm going to tell you off because it was just so under the radar. And then when 2020 hit, the, the, the shit just hit the fan, right? All of a sudden, everything just started spewing out like diarrhea from people which I was very surprised by. And, um, you know, I, I think my hope is that in 2020, November, when Biden is president and he's inaugurated in January 2021, I hope that society will not just only heal, but, you know, get back to normal and create some real change and implementations that will be fair and equal, right? And um, ending that system systemic and institutional racism, because now that we acknowledge it, right? And being fair to everybody, um, you know? And, and sometimes I think the Trump supporters out there that are vehemently fighting, like, for example, in California, the Republican Party, they try to put fake uh, voting ballots, right? Mailboxes for the voting ballots, in front of a church. And the Secretary of State of California had to come out and say, that's illegal. You can't do that, right? And I think these Trump supporters that are trying to fight and keep Trump in office for four more years, I think they're afraid that when Biden wins, that the tides will turn and we're going to start doing what they did to us, right? But the thing is, I don't think a lot of people will do that. I think people will move on. They will never forget they just won't talk to them anymore or maybe interact, in, interact with them in a personal and business setting. But I don't think we're going to be like those Proud Boys who like to start trouble, right, and physically try to f harm others. I think we're better than that. But I think that's what they're afraid of. So if you're able to vote early by mail or in person, please vote and Please, please support your Asian brothers and sisters out there. Support your black brothers and sisters out there. People of color, the Blasian community, the LGBT, the trans community. Support those communities because those communities are very vulnerable right now. And the reason why I say they're vulnerable is because, you know, 
the white supremacy groups, the neo-Nazis, the KKK, the Proud Boys, they're very brave. You know, I joke, I, you know, that stand back, stand tall, or stand back and stand by, you know, when, um, when the gay Twitter kind of took that over and I participated in that, you know, um, that was something that I participated in to kind of say, screw you, Proud Boys, right? Um, and now that all jokes aside is done, I think we need to um, make sure that they go back to their rocks where they came from, the hole in the rug, so to speak. Because those racists should not be around society, nor they should be um, okayed to say what they say. And I think a lot of those racists will be quiet once Biden's president and Kamala Harris, when she becomes vice president, I think a lot of these hate groups and these QAnon folks will wake up and get their shit together and perhaps maybe rejoin the society if they want to or if not separate from us. I don't know. But they will. I don't think they'll be this brave as they were for the past four years. Right. Um, I know I, I know I ramble and talk a lot, so I apologize for that. Uh I hope everyone has a good night. And when I say stay safe and stay healthy out there, I truly do mean that to all of you. And, um, you know, if I ever offend anyone, right, if I use the wrong terminology or this is a term I shouldn't say, then call me out on it. I will respect that and educate myself and do better. And I appreciate all of you. And I appreciate all my new... Uh, Korean adoptees and, and Blasian friends that I've connected with, I mean, you're well worth the connection than those realtor people out there that I've been uh, connected with on Facebook since 2008. Um, those 1,200 to 1,500, 2,000 folks that I lost in that summer, I've gained that much in new friendships and connections from those communities the Blasian community, the adoptee communities, right? I appreciate you guys. Uh, you guys are so diverse in terms of being an artist, a social justice worker, a teacher, an educator, uh, a, a stay-at-home mom, whatever it is. I mean, you know, you guys are all wonderful people, especially my queens out there, you know? Um, you guys are so cute in terms of your beauty. Um, believe me, I take inspiration from you and I, I thank you for the makeup tips. Uh, I know I can never be queen like you guys, but you guys are awesome. All right. Have a good night. Thank you for listening.